Okay, now before we go on and look at the doors and the windows and how to put those in the walls, let's look at just a couple more things that are kind of particular little details about like Schindler's walls and how he joins them, especially down at the floor. There's some interesting stuff going on there. You'll see that down at the floor he has oh, some sort of finished floor. I'll guess it's about an inch of hardwood or even down here you'll see he has a detail where it's a more linoleum kind of rolled back up under to a little bit of a stucco stop there kind of probably in bathrooms and kitchens and places where we wanted kind of a, a waterproof surface or a water resistant surface. But he also has this little funny thing in the corner where it's like a piece of baseboard. It's like the finished floor goes under it and then there's like this little triangular piece. Let's kind of talk about that. It's kind of in there. It's like one by two, just kind of rolled it at like a 45 degrees, something like that. Okay, that piece right down here, that's a little piece of what I'll call stucco stop. What happens is you don't actually want to run your stucco or your uh, like plaster right on down to the floor. Um, just as the house moves and settles and things like that, you get cracking in it. So it's better actually to leave a gap or put a little piece of wood in there. Just something so you're not running you know, stucco down to a 90 degree like perpendicular angle. You have a cracking problem later. But let's see if we can go through and model some of these things. So, for example, let's come back over and think about the finished floor. This is all the subfloor right now. If I want to go through and put the finished floor in the way that Schindler put the finished floor in, which is sort of between the walls, he actually went through and, again, looking back at his detail, you know, ran the subfloor or ran the studs all the way down to the subfloor, which is still the way we do it, and then put the finished floor between. That's a more accurate model of how we do this. What we can do is as follows. Let's go through and actually create another floor. And I'll call this, I can just duplicate this one. I'm going to call it just sort of wood finish floor, finish floor wood, whatever I call it. And this is going to be, oh, let's say that it's only about zero foot one inches. And we could say that instead of wood floor planking, let's say wood flooring. Okay, something a little bit nicer. We can put some, suppose the utilitarian uh, planking, we can go ahead and put some nice finished wood in there. We'll put that in there. That looks fine. Say okay. Now, when you go through and place this, let's talk about how you do that. What you want to do is actually go through and, as opposed to putting it right at level one, you want to give it the height offset. You're always with floors measuring to the top of the floor. So if we're, if we're putting in finished floors as an explicit object, and again, a lot of people don't do this as a separate ob operation, but if we want to go through and do this, you need to go through and put in that offset. Then I can start drawing the floors. And what would I be drawing the floors to? I could pick the lines or I could pick the walls either way. If I'm picking the walls, I'm not going to extend into the core. I often say extend into the core, but in this case, I just want to go to the finished surface of the wall. So I can uh, oh, go to the finished surface of that wall and maybe the finished surface of this wall because I really want it to be between, not actually into the wall. Okay, And then I can just sort of uh, draw the boundaries. I'll just put a little bit of finished floor in here. And the reason, again, we don't tend to do this for a lot of houses is if you have to go through and put the floor in on every house and every different room, it gets to be a lot of work to sort of put the finished floors in there. We often use some shortcuts like just painting a floor on or doing some interesting things like that that aren't really very true, but sort of expedient. Let me finish that. Let's take a look at it in our detail now. So. That's kind of more what we have in mind. There's the finished floor with the studs and all that kind of stuff, kind of coming on down further than that. You can sort of see the finished floor here is lapping over between the plank floor and the other floor on that side. So, you know, it's kind of a, not a bad detail in terms of what's going on. Let's take a look back in 3D again. It doesn't look very different. Maybe I should give my finished floor a different color just so you'll recognize it as being different. So I'll go to the materials. And for my flooring, I could choose a different color. I'm just going to shade it for now so you can sort of see the difference. Okay, so we can see where the finished floor is versus the uh, non-finished floor. 
Okay, the final thing we want to think about is that whole issue of that little baseboard piece. And that's kind of a really interesting thing. It's kind of a nice standard thing you can do. Uh, if you put baseboards or oh, crown molding or cornice molding or uh, oh, what do we call it, chair rail in a room, something like that, it's kind of a nice way of doing it. And we do it with a tool called a wall sweep. Let's talk about how a wall sweep works. A wall sweep lets you go through and just basically choose a profile and we have to choose a profile that we're going to put in here. Let me show you what the cornice one looks like. That's not the one we're going to use, but we could use that as a starting point just to show you. I can sort of choose this wall and put it in there. I'll put it on, actually there's not a wall on that side, so you won't see it over there. You can put it on this wall, whatever height you want it to be. The nice thing about a wall sweep is it does this. If you go back and put a door in or a window, okay, the wall sweep's actually pretty good about removing itself. So it has the whole hierarchy of things down right, which is pretty good. That's sort of what we want to have happen to our baseboard. So let me take that door out again, and we'll think about how to create this wall sweep. The deal is for this cornice, which is not the one we want to use, we have this whole issue of it has some sort of profile that it's set to, and we can choose all sorts of different profiles that we want to adjust it to. Okay, so what this is really going to start with is by drawing a profile. I sort of keep on getting that message. I keep on drawing profiles of things. So let me cancel out of that. And I'll go down to my profiles. Let's see if we can go through and just create something that looks like the way we want it to be. Where I'm going to start with that same just dimensional number. That was kind of an easy one. And I'm going to save it as something else. Let me just edit this. Okay, which is sort of a start. And what I'm going to do is basically just come up with a profile that has the right shape. Actually, for this, I'm even going to, for editing the profile, I'm going to look at the visibility graphics, turn on the reference planes, just so you can sort of see how this thing is defined. Okay, because this point right here where those two things intersect is the, the insertion point. So I'm not going to be smart about all this dimensioning for what I'm going to do. I'm going to take those out. It's not going to be parametric. I'm just going to draw one just to be quick. That's uh, oh, just static. But what I'm going to do is take out those lines. I'm going to put in some of my own lines. And what do my lines look like? It's sort of what Schindler had shown over here. He wanted something that was kind of a one by two, kind of flipped over. Okay, so let's kind of approximate that. For me, this is going to be, oh, kind of coming up. I should think about the size of this. Like this. Boy, that looks very funny. Oh, I think it's because there's the dimensions right now. <laughs> let's, let's do ourselves a favor. I'm going to go through and I put a line or put some sort of reference plane, something in there so I have some sense of scale, because right now I have no sense of scale. I'll put a reference plane in here. And then what do I want that to be? I'll say if it's a one by two, maybe that is like, oh, two inches off the floor. Okay, at least now I have something to operate on. In fact, we could use reference planes and do something parametric, but again, I'll keep it simple for right now. Okay, so I'm going to do something that is, oh, kind of like this, roll on up, roll on down at 45 degrees, come on over. Maybe I'll bring this one down at 45 degrees. Actually, if I didn't, if I was being smart, I'd sort of say, let's do an offset at one inch. Not 10 feet, zero foot one. Zero foot one. That's funny. Hmm. Which one do you like? One inch. Try that. Okay. There it is. And now I can trim those lines up. TR to trim. Okay. That's actually pretty close. Oops. Wrong side. Don't do that. Click on the side you want to keep. There we go. Okay. Let me save this as. Always save as when you do this. Don't spread over the old one. Let me save this as. And I'm going to say this is going to be my Schindler baseboard profile. Again, we'll use this as a placeholder. 
Okay, we're almost done with our uh, wall sweep profile. We have to do one very special thing, though, to kind of keep on going with it. And that is every profile actually has a use. And you have to sort of say how it's going to be used to determine where it's going to start showing up in the Revit interface, where it's going to be available as an option. So one last thing to do, though, to adjust this baseboard is this profile that we adapted was for a railing piece, which so shows up there. We have to have to change this property right over here and say that as opposed to just being a railing, okay, we want to use it as a wall sweep. Otherwise, it's not going to be available for us. And I think that's sort of an important thing as we do a lot of these profiles is just pay attention to this notion over here, how it's going to be used, because that will affect really where it is available. Okay. When we're diffing an existing one, it probably already is set to something that's useful. But in this case, I adapted a handrail to be a baseboard just to get the profile, and I needed to change the application of what that sweep is. So I'll say apply to that. Let me save this away, and I'll go through and load it into our project. Okay, um, now that we're back in the project, we can go to the wall sweep tool under uh, the home, choose wall sweep. And what we can do is just duplicate this type. Let me duplicate this. I'm going to call it my Schindler baseboard. Okay. Then we'll choose the profile. And we'll choose, if we go move it on down there, I believe it was that one. We can give it a material if I want. For example, oh, let's go ahead and give it like the finished wood or something like that. Did I have any finished wood? I'll just make it cherry for now. That. We can go through and give it a subcategory. I'll just call it, leave it at cornices. Say OK. And now we can go through and place that. And as we go through and place that, let me zoom on in so you can see it being placed. You'll start to see, here's my Schindler baseboard. I can put it right down at the bottom of that wall. I can put it right down at the bottom of this wall, though I should put it on top of the finished floor. Maybe I'll rub ro this around a little bit and do it that way. And again, choose the wall sweep tool. And I'll put the Schindler baseboard right here. Oop, a little too deep, huh? Let me undo that. Come on down. Okay, and once we go through and put it in there, if you need to adjust the height, you can choose it and give it an offset relative to the level. Okay, in this case, it's one inch off of the level because we want the base of it to actually be um, just above the finished floor as opposed to inserted into the finished floor. And the nice thing again about this finish or this baseboard uh, piece as a sweep is we, we go through and put a door in there or something like that, it'll inter interrupt it. So we actually have the ability to put it in there. So let's leave that there in terms of these finish details, the finished floor details, and move on to the topic of really how we go through and start adjusting the uh, doors and windows so that they look appropriate for the Schindler houses.